Good morning, everyone. It's Vicki from Messy Table Studio. We are having wicked thunderstorms and torrential rains. You may hear thunder bumpers in the background, and it's going on right now. Um, but please try to <laughs> ignore that. I've been trying since about 1.30 to ignore it, so been up a while. Um, I'm going to do something today that I've learned over the last week or so of watching videos. And I want to try this. This is called Mamagami. It is the art of taking paper and making it feel like material. It is a Japanese uh, method. So I have some, let's see, this is a jelly print, this is a jelly print, this is a jelly print with a semic writing on it. And this is a jelly print where I printed, uh, let's see, I printed this Studio 490 Wind of Windy Vecchi's. Oh, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Her, um, it looks like it's out of a dictionary. Anyway, so that's printed on top of here. So I'm going to do the Mamagami, but I'm only going to show you how to do the one, one method I'm going to use for now. And then I'm going to come back on another video and show you how I'm going to use the Mamagami paper. I have two pieces hanging up right now that are um, drying. And um, I watched a video and the person said you should hang them up to dry and let them dry anywhere from two to ten days. So I have a retractable clothesline in my art room from one side of the art room to the other kind of diagonally and um, since I have hot flashes <laughs> um, and it's getting warmer here I have a ceiling fan going right now and so it shouldn't take that long because of all the air circulating with the ceiling fan nevertheless they're hanging up to dry and now I want to try to make these into mon Mamagami paper. All right, let's see. So I think maybe I should start with the smallest one because it'll take less time. All right, so what you're going to need is some kind of a oil, a light oil, from what I understand. I tried it with hand lotion, and hand lotion did not go as well. Uh, where's my piece of paper I did? All right, here is the first one that I did. This was an 8.5 by 11 a photocopy of a jelly print and it's very limp but I did it with um, hand lotion because somebody, somebody else said they used hand lotion and I don't particularly like the way it is with hand lotion because it just didn't, I don't know, it just doesn't feel the way it should although it's very soft and there's no you uh, because you have hand lotion uh, well I'll show you with the olive oil, hang on all right, so that's the piece that I've done. I've done a couple pieces on my own before filming the video here. All right, so what you do is you take, I have a glare on this board, so I'm just going to do this, <laughs> turn it upside down because the light reflects on it, and you crumple in your four corners, and from what I understand, that is to preserve your corners, and you kind of fold your paper in and make it into... A ball but before you do that what you need to do is and I was a little resistant to this idea that's why I started with the hand lotion but um, since doing this I think this is better put olive oil on your hand then take your paper and crumple it up and go back and forth and back and forth um, um, the whole point of doing this is to make it translucent although I'm not sure this is going to happen um, with the papers that I'm using which is computer paper but you keep kneading the paper and the oil helps to soften up the fibers which are from wood or cotton and it softens them up then you open it up and you can tell this is not done because Number one, it feels still like paper. And be careful when you do it because you don't want to rip it. Although I have poked holes in a couple of mine from being a little overzealous. See, so this could rip if I'm not careful. 
so that's a corner and you can tell that it's not done because it has white spaces on it so the whole point is that the oil will penetrate the paper so you crumple it up again and you just keep going back and forth and back and forth until the paper gets soft like this and like I said, this was an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, computer paper. All right, let me show, well, I don't think I have one. Hang on, I'll have to get it in another segment, but I'll show you the difference between eight and a half and a little by 11 and what I ended up with, with the green and yellow sunflowers. All right, and occasionally you unfold it. And and you fold it in again and if you the oil on your hand rubs off onto the paper and it's saturated enough you pour a little bit more and this is a little piece of paper so hopefully this won't take as long as some of the eight and a half by 11s did Okay, so this is still white and the thing that you'll notice when it gets smaller is that the color gets more intense because it's being compressed into a smaller area. Okay, so I may fast forward through this. Okay, so this is getting closer. And you see that it has shrunk down in size. I haven't torn any holes in this, but the day is still young. <laughs> you try to, the reason you curl it in is you're trying to um, save your uh, corners so your corners don't get beat up so bad badly. All right, so here it is. It still needs some work, but I'm going to use, oh, nice. I'm going to use this one next. So this is an eight and a half by 11 jelly print that I did on a um, eight by 10 jelly plate. I trimmed off the white pieces to it so you know this used to be eight and a half by eleven. Alright, so I'm going to fold in the corners. And I pour some more olive oil. Whoa, that's a lot on my hand. Oh, it doesn't matter if it drips on here because that's going to be next. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying the groundwork for a future project that I have in mind using this paper. So as you can see, the olive oil is soaking into the paper. And I'm showing the back side so you see the difference. The object of doing this with the olive oil is that all of this will be the same color as this right here. So it will be a bit transparent. You can't see my hand through here, but eventually you might be able to because this is a lighter color paper. All right, so let's fold my ends in again. Put some more olive oil on. I have to say, it's kind of hard to operate a camera, a phone, Go to the bathroom with all this olive oil on your hands. So I suggest you keep some paper towels, <clears throat> excuse me, and hand sanitizer next to you while you do this. So in case you have to get up or you have to answer the phone, you can clean your hands off. And then I've 
got a napkin here and there's hand sanitizer just outside of the scope of the camera. But um, after I finish doing this, then I go into the kitchen and I wash my hands with Dawn dishwashing liquid so that I'm not, I don't have greasy hands all day. So we're getting saturated here. So we need to refold the paper. This is a time consuming project, but I wanted to show you how it changes the paper. It gives it this nice cloth texture. Okay. Well, the Japanese also do it with some kind of a rice paste, a rice substance, when they do theirs. See, the oil is starting to soak through. And the, the because it's soaking in, this is getting darker, which is a more rich sort of color. All right, let's put a little bit more. And you can put too much olive oil on your hands and then your paper will feel a little bit wet. Um, so that's why you need to hang it up to dry. I did watch a video, I've watched like 10 videos this morning about Mamagami paper, um, but there's one in particular that I watched that I learned something about doing this, and that's Robin McClendon. Her video was two years old when I watched it, so it's been a while. But the part that I thought was really important to know is that if you have too much oil on it, you can hang it up to dry, or she said you can take two pieces of computer paper and put your um, project sandwiched in between the paper, clip it together, and leave it in there, and then you'll see like spots like this that'll bleed through. Like when you, if you put it like this, and it'll bleed through on the other side, and that will help absorb some of the olive oil or the oil that you use. Like I said, um, several videos talked about the kind of oil that you should use. Some suggested hand lotion, some suggested olive oil, a light olive oil, which is what I'm using right now, um, or sunflower oil, or uh, acacia oil, I think is what she said. Um, anyway, so I will put a link for Robin McClendon's video um, in the description box down below so you can see it. Maybe you can glean as much out of it as I did. I got a lot from her video. All right, so as you can see, my paper is shrinking. See, look. That's about the same size as this one I started. And look how much it shrunk. And it's not done yet because you can still see white. And um, according to several of the videos, if you can still hear the crunch of the paper, the paper has not succumb enough to the olive oil or the oil you're using or the mashing technique of going back and forth and knead. it's kneading the paper. I think it's the art of kneaded paper. N-K-N-E-A-D-E-D, -E -E kneaded paper. And every once in a while you got to unfold it and then refold it. All right, I'll fast forward through this part. As you can see, the paper is getting more compressed and the color is a little more intensified. You cannot see my hand through the paper because this is, you know, typing paper. But if you use 
deli paper or tissue paper of some sort, you will be able to see right through it. Okay, I have two more pieces to do. I'm going to do this one, which is a jelly print on computer paper that had something else printed on it. And then this one right here. I want to see what this will look like with all this stuff on it. So I will be back with the end product as soon as my hands recover. Okay, so <clears throat> I had finished doing all the pieces. So I finished, well, let me get this out of the way. I finished this one while you were watching and this one. Um, I think I did this on a piece of, uh, uh, there was another print on here when I did the jelly print and it shows through kind of a pinkish color in the middle here. So this does work where you, where it gives it a little bit of translucency. Not a lot though. It would be better if it was deli paper. Okay, so this is the one that I did that was the large one. That was the eight and a half by 11, almost eight and a half by 11 because I had trimmed off the edges. I did have print ink on here, stays on black ink. And it, I know, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it came off on my hands and it didn't, it didn't stay very well. And you can't see hardly any of the, of the stamping I did on this. So that did not go as I had planned for it to, but it has gotten darker and smaller and it is pretty much saturated. I still need a little work on the corners here, but it's pretty well saturated. Then the last one is this little bitty one that I did. And again, this was, uh, I think I had printed something on one side of the paper and then decided to use the other side for the jelly print. So this is the jelly print, the little one. As you can see, there's some black here. I think this is from the ink off of here. So that is my Mamagami experiment with my papers. A lot of people are using magazine pages and junk mail and all kinds of cool stuff, but I just thought I would use some of my jelly prints that are in my drawers because the drawers are getting rather full and it was time to do something with them. So in a, maybe in a couple weeks after my paper dries out, I'll be back to show you what I'm going to do with this paper. And then here's this one. Sorry. This is the first, second or first or second one I did. This one was, like I said, done with hand, hand lotion. So it's not, you don't have the, the look on the back the same as this. Okay, so that's it for the Monogami paper. Um, I will leave Robin McClendon's video from two years ago in the description box down below so that you can watch it and hear what I heard and learn what I learned. All right, so I will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Okay, so <clears throat> I had finished doing all the pieces. So I finished, well, let me get this out of the way. I finished this one while you were watching and this one. Um, I think I did this on a piece of, uh, uh, there was another print on here when I did the jelly print and it shows through kind of a pinkish color in the middle here. So this does work where you, where it gives it a little bit of translucency. Not a lot though. It would be better if it was deli paper. Okay, so this is the one that I did that was the large one. That was the eight and a half by 11, almost eight and a half by 11 because I had trimmed off the edges. I did have print ink on here, stays on black ink. And it, I know, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it came off on my hands and it didn't, it didn't stay very well. And you can't see hardly any of the, of the stamping I did on this. So that did not go as I had planned for it to, but it has gotten darker and smaller and it is pretty much saturated. I still need a little work on the corners here, but it's pretty well saturated. Then the last one is this little bitty one that I did. And again, 
this was, uh, I think I had printed something on one side of the paper and then decided to use the other side for the jelly print. So this is the jelly print, the little one. As you can see, there's some black here. I think this is from the ink off of here. So that is my Mama Gummy experiment with my papers. A lot of people are using magazine pages and junk mail and all kinds of cool stuff, but I just thought I would use some of my jelly prints that are in my drawers because the drawers are getting rather full and it was time to do something with them. So in a, maybe in a couple weeks after my paper dries out, I'll be back to show you what I'm going to do with this paper. And then here's this one. Sorry. This is the first, second or first or second one I did. This one was, like I said, done with hand hand lotion, so it's not, you don't have the, the look on the back the same as this. Okay, so that's it for the Monogami paper. Um, I will leave Robin McClendon's video from two years ago in the description box down below so that you can watch it and hear what I heard and learn what I learned. All right, so I will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.